glad to be back with you. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about something called specific impulse. Now this is something you'll run across if you ever deal with jet engines or rocket engines, anything like that. Specific impulse always used to confuse me because of the units, right? I'm going to tell you what it is and I'm going to give you some examples of specific impulse for some real uh, engines. Okay, so let's talk first about what impulse is. Now you know, in dynamics we learn that impulse equals change in momentum. Well impulse, assuming steady state, okay, assuming nothing's changing, impulse equals force times time, all right? So in metric units, that's newtons times seconds. So newton seconds is the, the unit for impulse. Anytime you see the word specific, that's engineering terminology for per unit weight, like specific gravity is the, the uh, weight of uh, some substance compared to water. So like gasoline has a specific gravity of a little less than one, so gasoline floats. A brick has a specific gravity of a lot more than one, so it sinks. Right, so specific impulse, and they call that ISP, you'll see that a lot, is impulse per unit weight. So what it'll look like is force times time divided by mass times the acceleration of gravity. And I'm going to call this g sub zero, because since we're talking about rockets, it probably matters where we are. This g sub zero means at the surface of the Earth. Alrighty, so let's look at the units on this. Well, let's see, we've got newtons times seconds in the numerator. The denominator, we've got kilograms. And then over here, we've got meters per second squared. So I'll put that in here too. And notice something about that denominator, kilogram meters per second squared, that's a newton, okay? F equals ma, well if that's ma, it has to equal F. So that cancels out and your units turn out to be seconds. So specific impulse of an engine, and it's usually related to the fuel you use as well, is expressed in seconds. All right, so if you want some uh, examples for uh, a jet engine, an efficient turbofan like you'd find on an airliner, specific impulse is about 3,000 seconds. I guess I'll call that a, that's really a turbofan. Okay, next one is a chemical rocket, like uh, the uh, space shuttle main engines ran on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And this one matters, it depends on whether you're on the, uh, in the atmosphere or in a vacuum. This number is for a vacuum and that's about 450 seconds. So the difference between these two numbers, a turbofan gets a lot more impulse, a lot more force times time per unit fuel weight than a rocket does. It's more efficient, okay? That's why these things can run for hours and hours and hours, and a pretty long burn on a rocket's about 10 minutes. If you've got a rocket engine that's running for 10 minutes, that's a lot. 20 minutes would be just epic, okay? So the ne next thing we're trying to do in uh, powering things in space is with ion engines, okay? And a run-of-the-mill ion engine has a specific impulse of about 3,000 seconds, so it's all of a sudden about as efficient as a turbofan. Only problem with ion engines is that the force is measured in a couple of newtons. This thing can make uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of newtons of force. This one can't. Okay, so you're never going to get off the ground, at least not yet, with an ion engine. But once you get out into space, you can let one of these things run for weeks or months. And you can build up some pretty serious impulse. And since it, you get so much impulse per unit weight, you don't have to carry a lot of fuel with you. That's the beauty of it. And the, there are some advanced ion engines now. Advanced ion. Is it still in frame? It is. Okay. And those are approaching 21,000 seconds. So that's pretty good. There's one last thing I want to tell you about right now, and let's see, I'm going to, let's, let's go over here, all right? If uh, time gets really short, okay, this is over some unit of time, and I, I, I specifically said this is for the, uh, constant conditions. Well, conditions aren't always constant. If time gets really short, okay, and so the, 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 the amount of fuel you use in that time, represented by that, is also uh, small. Um, What'll happen is, as time gets small, time gets small, then m over t, this is the mass consumed and the time over which it's consumed, starts looking like m dot, and that's dm dt if you want to, want to write it in that uh, form. 
There's one more thing you need to know. The, the force produced by a jet engine or a rocket engine is the velocity of the exhaust, V sub E. So that's how fast the, the exhaust is moving with respect to the engine, times m dot. Okay, well, that force and that force are the same thing. So let's, let's put that in there. So ISP is now equal to force, which is V E over M dot, and I'll get my head out of your way. So I put that in right there for force. And in the numerator, I've got M dot G zero. Okay, remember that T went away as we went to M dot. That crosses out, it cancels out. And so specific impulse is also equal to the exhaust velocity times the acceler or divided by the acceleration of gravity at the Earth's surface. So hopefully this helps. This is a, what I hope is a simple uh, explanation of a very useful quantity and an explanation of why the units for specific impulse are seconds. It actually makes sense. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.